Hey YouTube, it's Mark here, just going to record, Lord willing, a, a fairly short email, this time on uh, ministries and examining those ministries in light of the scriptures. And just really wanted to cover um, a couple of very kind of core points about ministry, um, because... You know, there are a lot of ministries here on YouTube. I consider myself to have a small ministry, but what I'm about to say um, would apply to what I do here um, and elsewhere, of course, in the Philippines and, and in other places. Um, but we should be examining all ministries according to, to certain criteria and, and certain um, scriptural facts, basically. Um, and the first one that I wanted to talk about is actually off the back of um, a house church study that we did here last Sunday. And it's that was off the back of another study that I'd done many months ago with some other Christians. And it was Ephesians chapter four, which is just um, an incredibly convicting chapter in the Bible, especially when you get to the end. And it starts talking about how Christians ought to behave one to another, absolutely um, very convicting verses, very kind of sobering verses to think about. So if you feel inclined, I would strongly recommend that you read Ephesians chapter four It's in, in its entirety, the whole epistle, the whole New Testament, the whole Bible. Right. But, you know, if you get a moment, take a look at that. And uh, uh, it's it's very, very convicting, especially as you get to the end. But the first point that I wanted to get across here is there's there's two elements to a ministry. So you 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 have the enablement kind of element to the the ministry, and then you have the purpose. So um, I wanted to split those in two because actually uh, the scripture itself splits ministry into into those definitions. Um, so the first part is about enablement, and you know we're going to look at some scripture about this. But the the basic fact is that ministry is enabled by the Lord Jesus Christ. Ministry is given by the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, a man is put in ministry by the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not um, able to... Well, let's think about this. He can put himself in ministry. He can enable himself through one form or another, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But if the Lord Jesus Christ hasn't done it, then it's not a valid ministry okay so let's read some verses on this in Ephesians chapter 4 let's read verses 7 till 11 and actually what we'll we're going to do is avoid it's probably the first time you're going to hear me say this we're going to avoid verses 9 to 10 because they're bracketed verses as an ex explanation for what's said in verse 8 okay what I want to talk about here is ministry specifically so verses 7, 8 um, and, and 11. So it says here, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Amen. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Amen. So that's the first point that I wanted to make straight off the bat here. Um, and as I alluded to just a moment ago, ministry is a gift. It's, a, it's given by the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and he gives, you know, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. Those positions are given by the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we, we, we have this bizarre system in modern Christianity where you have men and incredibly women as well nowadays. But you have men that go to Bible college which you won't find in the scripture anywhere, or seminary, you know, again, you won't find that anywhere, or, you know, various places like that, you know, colleges, you know, doing doctorates in theology or whatever, and they'll come out and they'll give themselves, they will enable themselves, they will place themselves in ministry. Oh, I'm going to be a pastor of, you know, so-and-so. But scripture doesn't teach that that's how it happens. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ gives um, gives those uh, those roles, you know, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. He gives those unto men as well. And that's very interesting as well when you think about it, because it, here we're not talking about the body. We're talking about men, which is very interesting. So it's the Lord Jesus Christ that gives these gifts. You know, these positions are are, are called gifts. You know, it's a very interesting terminology. It's not just you know, a name, they're considered to be gifts unto men, which, um, you know, really should get you thinking about it as well. But let's take a look at another another verse here. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, 
and it's Paul speaking here, says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Amen. So just uh, reiterating what I said earlier, it's the Lord Jesus Christ that enables a ministry. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that puts a man into ministry. You know, it's not the man himself that does that. And this is what I mean. Nowadays, you find that it's completely reversed. And what you're finding, and, and most of you, I'm sure, are, are witness to this. There are, quote, ministries online, you know, on YouTube or, or in real. And they are clearly, clearly not given by the Lord Jesus Christ. They are clearly not enabled by the Lord Jesus Christ. They are clearly not put there by the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet they will say... I'm a teacher, you know, I'm an evangelist, even incredibly, I'm a prophet or I'm an apostle, some of these insane lunatics will say. But the, the most dangerous people, of course, are those that claim to be teachers, um, but they haven't been given by the Lord Jesus Christ. They haven't been enabled by him and they haven't been put there. They have put themselves in that position. OK, now, the reason that I wanted to talk about that and lead on to the next part is that we can find ways of, for want of a better expression, proving that that is so. OK, and let's take a look at back in Ephesians. And this is what I'm talking about. Some great, great verses continuing on. So verses 12 to I think it's 16. And we need to think about what the purpose of a ministry really is and you know these verses i think should be critical for anybody examining a ministry uh, at all so let's just read this verse 12 particularly profound as well um and continuing on for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. You you almost can't find better scripture than that. I mean, it's so, well, you can, of course, but reading that is is just so amazing. And verse 12 became so profound for me many months ago that I kind of um, vowed a vow, I suppose you could say, that that would be, you know, what I would want people to say about the ministry that I have on YouTube. I wouldn't want people to go, well, hang on a second, you know, Mark doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. You know, verse 12 uh, is particularly profound. So whenever I look at a ministry online, or in real as well, you know, I examine it primarily against verse 12. And I ask myself, you know, is this ministry perfecting the saints? Is this, you know, is this individual, is he doing the work of the ministry? what he has been tasked to do by the Lord Jesus Christ. And is he edifying the body of Christ? And obviously in verse 16, look at that qualifier at the end of verse 16. Um, Maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. You know, that last part is not uh, you know, a kind of tacked on addition. It's very, very important. And in fact, if you go on and read the rest of Ephesians chapter five, you're going to see some pretty amazing, you know, connection with that. It's it's just so profound. So, you know, um, this is what we have to be careful about again, because, you know, a ministry that has been enabled and given by the Lord Jesus Christ is going to operate in that manner. How they won't operate is the way that we seem to be seeing a lot of these, quote, ministries online. You know, you're going to be having the body of Christ, and this is the problem, there's a lot of deceit here. We're going to have the body of Christ, what? Tossed to and fro, verse 14. Carried about with every wind of doctrine and by the slight of men. And, uh, and the ultimate goal is to deceive them. 
you know, and uh, there are a number of ministries out there that that is their sole intention. That's all they're trying to do. What they aren't doing is perfecting the saints. Now, pushing your particular doctrine, pushing your particular agenda is not perfecting the saints. You know, again, if you look at verse 13, it will give you an idea of what we're talking about here. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. That's so profound. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. What we're not talking about here is this ecumenical rubbish. You know, um, this is um, kind of adding on to what I said uh, in my videos that I recorded last night. Um, you know, a lot of these ministries are, are sowing discord. They're, they're creating division, strife, envying. You know, they're, they're deliberately carrying these out. Now, a ministry would not seek to do this. You know, a ministry given by the Lord Jesus Christ would not be doing this. And there, there is a difference between reproving error um, and admonishing, you know, the saints and so on and so forth. Um, there's a difference between that and what we see in verse 14, for example, having the body just tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, just all over the place, confusion, division. That's not correct. OK, you know, and I understand that, that there can be some different um, takes on certain thing, but core doctrine and core teaching should always be the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, what? or a ministry to be doing. As I said, a ministry should be perfecting the saints, not corrupting them, okay? A ministry should be edifying the body in love and not deceiving it, right? A ministry should be unifying the body in faith and not dividing it, see? Interesting. And men in ministry should be doing the work of the ministry, you know? If you're an evangelist, for example, why are you not out preaching the gospel of Christ? If that's what you are, if you've been called to be an evangelist and it's a very specific uh, role within the body, why are you not doing the work of an, evan of an evangelist, making full proof of thy ministry? Why are you not doing that? You know, if you're a teacher, you should be teaching. You know, it gets pretty straightforward, really. You know, and, and you can talk about other roles as well. But if you're if you've been called to do something, then that's what you should be doing. And, you know, one of the things that I see quite frequently is there are a lot of men that, that claim to be, um, you know, one thing or another, a teacher or, or a preacher or whatever it is. And yet they're not preaching. You know, they're just, uh, you know behind a screen 24 7 uh, every video is the same there's no difference um, and I don't say this in a kind of boastful kind of manner I mean so for example you can see all my videos and it's not just about you know being in a, a garden or a, a place somewhere different every now and again uh, there are videos of me for example where I am uh, addressing Christians you know, 60, 70, 100 of them in some cases. And again, not saying that in a, in a boastful way, but I'm just showing that that um, I am doing the work of the ministry. I'm not just sitting here. Um, such activity comes um, at great sacrifice, actually. Uh, there's a lot that I there's a lot that I have to do in order to achieve those things. And it's doing the work of the ministry ultimately. I don't do it for any other any other reason than to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who saved me. So, you know, you have to ask questions about those men that put themselves into ministry because again, you can see what they're doing. They're corrupting um the saints, they're deceiving them, they're dividing the body, and they're essentially just sitting around um, not really doing anything, quite frankly. And again, what I'm not talking about here is whether someone is saved or not, okay? It's a very, very important, um, you know, differentiation we have to make here between somebody being saved and somebody believing that they've been called to ministry, okay? There's a huge difference between the two. So there are a lot of ministries out there that clearly are not given by the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not enabled by him. And yet these individuals are carrying about quote the work of the ministry but actually they're not doing it and it's kind of by their fruits you will know them and you'll see what they do their the whole ministry is about being divisive difficult um you know just uh 
you know, sowing discord, and that's all they seem to be about. And, you know, Scripture plainly teaches that that's not a ministry that's been enabled of the Lord. So you can call yourself a ministry as much as you like. You can say that you're a, a teacher. You can you can dress it up any way you like, but it's not been given by the Lord Jesus Christ. So um, the question is, what are you doing? And, uh, you know, if you're bold enough to believe that, that, that you are, um, uh, you know, given by the Lord Jesus Christ, then, well, good luck to you is all I'll say. But it's pretty obvious which ministries are given by the Lord Jesus Christ, um, you know, um, according to Ephesians chapter 4, um, amongst other uh, passages, of course. So if a, a ministry is doing those things, you know, if they're just, just you know, being divisive, uh, deceptive, no matter what they say, but if that's the, the fruit of that ministry, it's a pretty good indicator that it's not been given of the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, we're not talking about defending doctrine. Um, we're not talking about um, right and proper teaching. We're not talking about reproof. But we are talking about much more serious uh, red flags and alarms that can uh, that can come up. So, um, you know, and this is another point that I wanted to make as well, you know, and this is probably a bit more uh, exclusive to YouTube, I guess. But success and subscribers are not evidence of a ministry given by the Lord Jesus Christ or a ministry that's been approved. It's not evidence. You know, again. You know, it goes back to the whole kind of uh, argument about um, a man being uh, very old and therefore automatically wise or a man that's been, quote, saved for 20 years as if he, by the fact that he's been saved 20 years, has some vastly um, improved uh, knowledge of the scriptures. It's not always the case. I've met um, uh, very, very godly young men who know a lot about scriptures, far more than 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 men that I am aware of have been saved 20, 30 years in some cases, who know practically nothing, to be honest with you. And as uh, the scripture says, um, when Paul was talking to Timothy, it says, despise not thy youth. You know, the fact that you're young is irrelevant. The fact that you're You've only been saved a few years is irrelevant. If your head is in the Bible, if you're studying it to show yourself approved, um, exactly where does it say in Scripture that that's, you know, that's not a good indicator? It's a load of old rubbish, you know. If the Lord Jesus Christ has enabled you in ministry, um, it's going to happen ultimately. And, you know, it's going to be obvious by that ministry whether it's been enabled of the Lord or not absolutely obvious and uh age and and things like that are you know irrelevant so um you know again when people talk about um verse 12 you know perfecting the saints um doing the work of the ministry edifying the body of christ um perfecting the saints isn't um, you spouting your doctrine or your theology. That's not what it is. Perfecting the saints is actually a very, very personal uh, command. This is something that I was talking to a, a brother about recently. Um, you know, this is a very, very personal thing. Edifying is is teaching, essentially. You know, to, when you edify someone, you're, you're effectively helping them learn something new. Um, you know, not uh, uh, unknown as such, because again, think about it, when you get saved, do you know all mysteries automatically? No, of course you don't. It takes time. It takes study as well, you know. Um, so, you know, these men that are given into this position, these various positions have a, a very solemn responsibility. So just simply spouting their particular uh, you know, doctrine or whatever it is, uh, is not evidence of perfecting the saints. Um, you know, that's um, that's something else, basically, um, you know, um, and being edified by ministry, by the way, this is another important point. I've seen a lot of ministries and they seem to have this this common group of people that just amen everything that's put out. Um, there's a number of ministries that I've seen, uh, so-called ministries that I've seen that have this kind of just auto kind of approval thing and it, it just doesn't even matter what it's about most of the time you know it'll just get automatically approved um, and it's all about um, you know learning some new thing just encourage you to read Acts chapter 17 verses 18 to 21 where you know the Athenians were just interested in learning some new thing so for example I've seen uh, over the last couple of years actually I've seen videos on uh, the gap 
uh, flat earth is another common one nowadays. The sons of God appears to be an obsession for some people. I just don't even get it. You know, it's like an obsession. And if you don't think it's this, it's like a cause for a major kind of... It's insane. I just, I don't understand why people devote much study to to such a, um, you know, it's an obvious topic anyway, but such a, uh, you know, so much energy is expended on it. It's just, what is the purpose of this thing, you know? Um, and it, this is what I mean. It's it's primarily, prim, primarily to learn some new thing. But at the end of the day, you know, ministry isn't about just trying to get, oh, you know, we've got to talk about uh, the gap, whether you believe it or not. You know, we've got to talk about that and we've got to go. How is that helping the lost get saved exactly? How is that edifying the body of Christ? How is that perfecting the saints? How is that doing the work of a ministry? So an evangelist who spends his time, um, you know, he does a, you know, a 20 part detailed study on, on flat earth. How is that making full proof of his ministry? How is that doing the work of an evangelist? It's not. It's not. And even you could argue that that's a pointless thing for a teacher to do. I mean, again, if you get somebody that's newly saved and you spend ages, um, you know, trying to sort of set them straight on the whole kind of flat earth thing. I mean, what's the point? What is the point? Surely you want to get them solid on the gospel. Surely that would be a priority. Surely you want to get them, you know, witnessing and, and tracting and preaching and, and whatever else, you know, that, that would help. Surely you want to just, you know, perfect them. You want to help them with their prayer life, right? You want to help them get a sense of the scriptures and, and how it can relate to their day-to-day -day life. Um, you want to encourage them and exhort them and build them up. Surely that's more important. And yet you have ministries that just seem to make a, I don't know, their existence is about talking about, all the sons of God rubbish and, you know, and whilst I appreciate that, that there's an element of interest to that. I mean, if if you're a Christian, especially nowadays, and we are in these last days, there's absolutely no question about it. Is that really, honestly, the best use of our time? Is it really? It isn't. It isn't. It's just learning some new thing. And frankly, you know, with the whole kind of gap and flat earth and sons of God stuff, I'm happy to learn about that in glory. I'm happy to be told about that in glory. None of those three topics, for example, are going to help me uh, save, lead people to salvation. None of them. So why expend any time and energy at all talking about them and, and getting into debates about them? And like, you know, this guy doesn't agree with me and, you know, but why are you wasting your time on this stuff? And this is what I mean. So again, when you look at a ministry and they just are interested about teaching some new thing, and this is what I mean. You know, first we had um, the gap thing kicked off. I think it was early last year or something. And that was all the rage and people were going absolutely crazy about it. And then we had the whole sons of God thing, which hasn't gone away, it seems. And it's just just constantly being talked about. And I, I don't see for what purpose. And then um, we, uh, what was it? We have the flat earth thing is a new thing. And I mean... I mean, it's interesting, of course, but again, if I'm going to spend my time studying this, I mean, what what am I doing, you know? And then, you know, oh, maybe I should record a bunch of videos on it. No, never. It's just of no use at all to anybody, I believe. Um, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't see how that helps people. I don't see how it's the, the work of a ministry, you know? And again, the whole thing about a ministry, as we read in verse 12 of Ephesians chapter 4, is to perfect the saints, not to bog them down in wearisome study 24-7. I mean, the word studies I do, are, for example, are to help unlock scripture, not to talk about some, frankly, meaningless topic, you know? So, take from it what you will, but, uh, you know, um, you know, there's there's some interesting parts there, basically. But, you know, so... <sighs> I mean, it's kind of been a bit disjointed, this video, so forgive me. But essentially, you know, it's the Lord Jesus Christ that enables a ministry. Um, a ministry is evidenced by what it does. So again, you know, examine a ministry according to the scripture. And just some kind of final admonition about this, really. Um, let's take a look um, at 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. And it is verse 1. 
So, um, yeah, so, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is one of the problems, you know, and I, I've been guilty of this before in the past. You know, I've looked at a ministry and, you know, or I've heard a sermon or something. I thought, wow, that's really good. And like, you know, that's just what I wanted to hear. And that was amazing and all the rest of it. Um, and you just automatically just assume that it's of God. Oh, this man is a great teacher and so on and so forth. But later on, you start to learn things about them. You know, so there was a ministry that I followed about about two years ago. And I ended up learning that they were post-trib. And I was horrified. And, and I just dropped them like a stone. This is what I mean. You know, I've heard people say this as well. And uh, I just encourage you all to be careful with this. But, you know, people will say, oh, you can, you know, take what's good and leave what's bad. That's not going to cut it. You know, a, a ministry is not going to be partly, you know, enabled or partly okay. Excuse me, it, e it either is enabled and purposed and, and, and it's evidenced by that or it's not. So again, there are a lot of men, very charismatic men, very um, well-spoken men, very kind of learned. Um, but even they haven't been given by the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. Very interesting. So again, a lot of Christians will just simply believe the spirits. They won't try them. And we should try every spirit, every one of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here's another one. And this one is uh, just as profound, actually. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verses 14 to 22. Um, where it says here, We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Um, yep, and carrying on. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. But the point that I wanted to make here as well is, you know, I've I've watched I've watched a number of ministries and I'm sure you can all relate. And I'm I'm watching them. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, where where is the joy? Where's the love? You know, where is the um, where's the peace? Where's the happiness? Where's the you know, where's the smile? Where's the joy and salvation? Where's the love toward the brethren? Where is it? Where is it? I mean, I'm watching some guys and it's like practically robots, you know, just, you know, parroting the same stuff. There's there's this 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 sober, serious kind of thing, 24 seven. It's the same kind of thing all the time. There's no joy. There's no happiness. And there is no love toward the brethren. And again, one way you can do that is by saying, well, he's not saved, he's a heretic, he's teaching a false this and a false that, and he's that guy. And then you, you'll declare him unsaved. I've heard uh, Christians call um, plainly saved other Christians bastards, you know, according to, to Hebrews, and say, well, he's not saved and you're no brother of mine. And it's like, that's a fatal terrible mistake you're making there right because as we said verse 15 whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him see and hereby perceive we the love of god because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren could you say that about your brother and sister in christ or is it easier um you know for you or and i speak kind of you know not to you personally, but, you know, to other people. Is it easier for you to just simply say, well, he's not, he can't be saved. He's not my brother. Very, very dangerous to do. And this is what you get. You get, you know, Christians for the most part, you know, flinging mud at each other. You're not saved. You're a heretic. And you're no brother. of my... So, so dangerous. And again, for ministries like that, it's a real problem. I mean, I, I, I've made it a point to, to say that all the time. I've been saying that for years now, you know, beloved brother, you know, and uh, 
warmest regards and Christian love, you know. And I'm not afraid to express my love for my brothers and sisters. Why? Because they are my brothers and sisters. They're family, right? So how would you, why would you not do that? And again, the whole point about family, and this this is true of Christians, is that family isn't perfect, as I'm sure we can all um, agree on. You know, but you don't not love your family, that's a really unusual situation to be in. And as Christians, we should be confirming our love toward the brethren without even thinking about it. And yet, you know, some of these ministries that I've seen online, I don't even recall them ever expressing love, ever. And it's just, that's unnatural. And again, it's another, just another red flag that comes up. What is this ministry doing? Has it been enabled by the Lord? You know, how can you perfect the saints if you don't even love them? Right. But they'll go, oh, you know, we're rebuking them sharply in the faith. Where's the love? You can do that with love. You can be strong. You know, you can be, um, you know, blunt and plain speaking. You can be those things. But actually what you find is it goes beyond that. You know, and I experienced myself uh, what, six summit weeks ago, just the most disgusting profanity from a professing Christian towards a Christian, you know? Interesting verses, right, from 1 John chapter 3. Let's also take a look at um, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And, uh, you know, these are great verses as well. So Galatians chapter 5, I mean, this should be stuff that's, that's basically automatic, you know. So Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 26, says as follows... But the fruit of the Spirit, capital S, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, capital S there again, let us also walk in the Spirit. Amen. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. And this is this this is another point that I want to make about some of these ministries. Where is the fruit of the spirit? You know, you'll look at a ministry and you'll go, as I just mentioned before, there's no love, there's no joy, there's no peace, there's no long suffering. You know, it's quick to anger and throw out accusations, even calling people unsafe. There's no gentleness or goodness. Amazing, right? Even faith in some cases. There's no meekness, no temperance, no no kind of like, you know, self-control. There's no kind of like uh, uh, moderation. It's just, you know, da-da-da-da-da. You know, it's just like they just say what, what they want to say. They just run their mouth. And as we know in, uh, what was it, James, um, I preached on this as well. Uh, James, in person as well, at, at an assembly here in the UK. Uh, James chapter, uh, yeah, James chapter 3. I preached this sermon. I've even got it written down in my Bible uh, back in November 2014 here in the UK before Christians in front of them. And, um, you know, it talks about the tongue, which no man can bridle, you know, and um, yeah, it's a little member and boasteth great things. James chapter 3 verse 5. I encourage you to read all of James chapter 3. That's what I did the, the sermon on. So um, amazing. You know, and again, you know, a lot of these ministries just can't bridle their tongue. They just just run their mouth. Um, and it's extremely dangerous um, because it says here, it goes on to say verse 8 and 9 in James chapter 3. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. See how dangerous it is to do this. And yet you'll get these ministries that will just happily record a video oh you know uh this this brother they'll name him which is unscriptural they'll name him publicly and just um shame him and uh curse him you know and uh he's made after the similitude of god and it's just an extremely dangerous thing to do extremely dangerous but some of these ministries seem to just do it quite happily without any kind of problems. And it's those kind of ministries that I know are not enabled of the Lord. I just know it for a fact. You can just look at them and go, there is no way that the Lord Jesus Christ, think about this, the Lord Jesus Christ has given you as a gift unto men. There's no way 
No way. It just it just isn't possible. And then you look at the way that they run that ministry and what they do. And you, you, you look at the scriptures and you go, is this truly given by the Lord Jesus Christ? And this is what he has ordained that this ministry is going to do? Really? And when you look at scripture and you look at the, the behavior, the attitude, um, what they do, a lot of red flags suddenly come up, don't they? A lot of red flags. And to finish with, uh, I've got a reference here uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, yeah, pro quite a few verses actually. Um, but let's let's read them and, and think about this. I mean, clearly we're talking about um, the apostle here, but he's speaking plurally about the rest of the, the workers with him. But it's just worth reading this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, verses 1 to 13. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offence in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Amen. That's a fantastic verse about ministry, right? Giving no offence in anything. Again, another red flag, right? But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labours, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armour of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honour and dishonour, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. And again, you know, Paul um, speaks in, in dire warning to, to the Corinthians. But look at some of the things that have been said there. Absolutely amazing. Again, examine a, a, a man that has been... Um, that, that says he has a ministry, that, that says that he is called by God to do whatever it is that he has been called to do. Examine it, you know, and in verse 3, here's a good example. Does he give offence? Really, does he give offence? Is the ministry blamed because of him? See? And look at some of these other characteristics. Again, a lot of what we've already been reading about. Look, as the ministers of God, verse 4, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities and distresses, and so on. A lot of these ministries are just, they're not experiencing this. They're not de dealing with this. They're not going through this. And I love in verse 6 again, and, and this, is, this is something that you won't hear a lot of these ministries say. Uh, the, the, the bit that I particularly like at the end of verse 6 is by love unfeigned. Real, genuine love for the brethren. When was the last time you heard a ministry talk about that in any context? But what do they do? They just keep going on about other stuff all the time. You know? Interesting, right? Can't you talk about your love for the brethren? Can't you talk about the word of truth? Can't you talk about the power of God? Can't you talk about... Um, just how much you yearn and desire to help your brothers and sisters, you know? Can't you talk about the anguish you feel for them when they're suffering, you know? Or or do you just want to simply just talk about some meaningless topic 24-7? Or constantly uh, have a pop at other, other men that do have a ministry given by God and try and tear them down? Maybe because your ministry is not given of God. Maybe that's the reason. And if that's true, get out of ministry. You know, close down your channel. Leave the assembly that you're, you're not, you know, enabled to to preach, you know, in front of. Or whatever it is, leave it. Leave it. You should be suitably afraid of the Lord, having put yourself in ministry, doing what you do. You should be suitably afraid of the Lord to just stop, 
you know. But if you want to carry on, um, good luck to you. That's all I'll say. Good luck, because you're going to need it. And in fact, luck won't cut it anyway, so... Um, I don't know what other term I can say to somebody who, who's doing that. But so my final admonition here, long video and apologies. Um, you know, examine every single ministry that you um, that you watch. That includes mine, by the way. I'm not um, sitting here saying, well, I, you know, I'm really great and cool and everything. You know, examine my ministry. You know, my videos are on here from start to finish, right? Um, you know, videos I first posted about um, the journey to the King James Bible, they're all there. You can see uh, the videos defending uh, the word of truth. Um, and you can see how my confidence built up over time. Um, and I resisted what I believe the Lord has enabled me to do, that has, you know, is, has given me to do. I resisted that. I resisted it. I really did. And I found that that was something that I couldn't no longer resist up until a point and that was especially true I think uh, midway through uh, I think 2014 I think not really sure not really sure but it happened a few years ago and um, I did resist it but I, I kept coming under increasing conviction and this is the thing that you won't hear these ministries talk about they won't actually show you how that happened and yet with me brothers and sisters prayerfully I hope you can just see that you can see the videos out in the Philippines. You know, I've got, um, and I, I really should try and get them uploaded. In fact, I have a way to do it now. I should get my previous audio uh, sermons that I've done, and that was back in 2014. Um, I'll try and get them uploaded here. And they were recorded in front of Christians when I first took that step out of doing that. And again, you know, the whole point is, if, if that was not of the Lord, you know, it would be immediately apparent. Um, and I've not once yet had any indication that it's not and again you know if if that's not the case i'm sure that um many of you would have written to me and said look mark you know and and suitably warned me that that's not the case but that's not happened you know i've had attack and criticism and other things but i've never had somebody under conviction of the lord jesus christ actually you know um say something so that's not happened. And again, I'm very careful with this as well. I mean, those of you that do know me, that, that who speak to me personally or that we correspond, you know that I can be reproved. You know that we can talk about anything. And I know for a fact that if any of you had those kind of concerns, you would say it. You know, it would just simply be, be stated. So, um, yeah, so like I said, don't just accept a ministry as being um, enabled of God. Diligently test them against scripture. Mark and avoid those clearly not given of God. Um, you know, I personally just watch, I think, two, uh, three channels on YouTube. And, um, you know, those guys, I mean, they, they're brothers, um, beloved brothers of mine um, and friends. You know, but again, if they're not going to... Um, teach as they ought to teach, I will say something, you know, and I have. So, um, you know, that's just a case in point. And I would expect them to do the same with me. Um, and they have as well. You know, we've, we've talked about some things before. So that's the way it should be. Um, but, um, you know, that in itself is an indicator of just how bad it is. Because, you know, um, if you're watching this, clearly you're, you're most likely a King James Bible believer and you know how bad the whole situation is with ministry on YouTube and and just finding good teachers and not just good teachers, but, um, you know, God fearing Christian men who just want to teach the word of God and who just want to do what the Lord has called them to do. And, um, you know, it can be very frustrating sometimes. Um, but again, just as a reminder, what I'm not talking about here is when I examine a ministry, I'm not talking about whether that individual is saved or not. Um, there's certainly question marks on some people. Absolutely. But what I'm talking about here is whether a ministry has clearly been enabled, given and, and put in place by the Lord Jesus Christ, whether that ministry demonstrates what a ministry should be doing. You know, and and also for the individual themselves, you know, you, there are some question marks to to ask about them. You know, where is the fruit of the spirit? You know, when you examine their their attitude and and their demeanor and what they say and the constant way that they they do things, you you just get very skeptical and you just you know, in, in accordance with scripture, you just kind of go, there's something not right here.
And, you know, that's something that's not right here feeling, by the way, brothers and sisters, is the Holy Ghost. And you shouldn't ignore it. You shouldn't ignore it. And and again, you know, sometimes what, what we do, and I, I've been guilty of this as well, is you kind of just sort of brush it to one side and you kind of get what you can from that. And then you just, you know, you sort of take a bit from here and a bit from there. Shouldn't be like that. A ministry is either given of God or it's not. There's no kind of 50, 50, 75, 25. It's either given of God or it's not. Um, so, you know, uh, long video, um, bit of rambling, you know, kind of over all over the place a little bit a lot to say really i guess um you know but uh, uh i'd be intrigued to hear what you have to say about this again you know i've had to disable comments for exactly the reason that i've been talking about there's been quote ministries out there that have uh, for some reason targeted um my ministry um and have said certain things about me and um they're entitled to their opinion you know if they if if that's how they feel that they should spend their time if that's what they think that the lord has called them to do which it isn't anywhere in scripture then by all means it's uh hey you know knock yourself out it's no problem with me um all i know is that i have a calling and uh, i'm pursuing that to the best of my um ability as a as a imperfect <laughs> fallible man uh you know trying to do the best that i can um with what little time we have left as well brothers and sisters so um please do pray for me um please do keep this ministry in your prayers um that it continues to act um and do the work of the ministry that it continues to perfect the saints and edify the body that's the purpose of the ministry and if if it ever strays from that I would expect immediate reproof um, and, if necessary, re rebuke. Um, I would rather that uh, a saint does that than be chastened by the Lord. So, um, you know, just encourage us all to have that, that kind of attitude if possible. But anyway, amen. Long, long video. Uh, if you've endured to the end of this one, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I really do appreciate uh, that you guys watch and, and listen to what I have to say. But as I try and um, point out every time, please run what I say by scripture. Please don't just take what's good. Um, if what I'm doing is unscriptural, then I would fully expect an appropriate response to that. Um, I don't believe that's the case personally, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open to um, reasoning with the scriptures. Um, so you can email me, BibleBelieverUK at gmail.com. Um, I pray that I continue to help perfect you um, and if we correspond believe me that you are helping to perfect me so i'm grateful for that and i just pray that i continue to help edify the body um especially in these uh especially in these last days so um thank you for watching god bless and godspeed